Welcome again. I, of course, am your dearest, dearest servant, Brother Dale. Brother Pastor Brian Dale, live from the sanctuary here at St. Mark in Waterloo, Iowa. Today uh, is lesson six, and the kingdom has come upon you. The lesson scripture is Matthew 12, 1 through 32, and the focus scripture is Matthew 12, 22 through 32. And saints, today I'm going to step out and explain something to you that's the kingdom has come upon you as a title of the lesson but there's something way more critical here that will affect your eternity if i would have wrote this lesson it would have been on blasting of the holy spirit and i've never kind of stepped outside i think only one time before but that's because the doctrine was bad i need to step outside of the title here not the scripture but the title here today because it's something super critical that you need to understand. And I'm gonna read these verses so we can put some context to this. Matthew 12, 22 through 32. Then they brought to him a demoniac who was blind and mute and, and he cured him so that the one who had been mute could speak and see. All the crowds were amazed and said, can this be the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, it is only by Beelzebub, the rule of demons, that this fellow cast out the demons. Jesus knew what they were thinking and said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste and no city or house divided against itself will stand. If Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? If I cast out demons by Belzadub, by who do your exorcists cast them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. But if it is by the spirit of God that I cast demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man? Then indeed the house will be plundered. Listen to this. Whosoever is not with me is against me, and whosoever does not gather with me scatters. Therefore, I tell you, people will be forgiven every sin and blasphemy, but blasphemy against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. Whosoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but whosoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven in this age or the age to come. Saints, in lieu of everything else that is written here today, and I know you been with me uh, for a while and I need you to trust me to step outside of this lesson title and this focus of this lesson today because the kingdom come upon you is great coming upon somebody is not accepted or pushed away because they call good evil and evil good the issue is the blasphemy not that the kingdom has come so what is blasphemy of the holy spirit blasphemy of the holy spirit is what the bible defines it as which is basically call it good evil and evil good the bible says sorrow, deep sorrow, which we would know as woe unto them that call good evil and evil good because the reality is they die like that, then they are in eternal damnation, burning and screaming alive forever in hell and the lake of fire. Why? Because the Holy Spirit, that's blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. All manner of, this I put it, all manner of sin will be forgiven unto men, even if men blaspheme against the Son, but he who blasphemes against the Holy Ghost shall neither have forgiveness in this life nor the next. That's what he said. Why is it worse to blaspheme against the Holy Spirit than Jesus? Why is it forgivable to blaspheme against the Son of God, but not the Spirit of God? Because it is the Spirit of God that comforts us and reveals all knowledge and truth to us about the Son of God. The Holy Spirit is our revelator. It is our eye opener that tells us and can not only preaches and confirms it to us, but it also convicts us that this is the truth. When we say what the Holy Spirit revealed about Jesus, and they did that because they were jealous. They did that because they were hard hearted. When they blasphemed against him and said they cast out demons by demons, they directly rejected the spirit of God's revelation about Jesus. So the burden becomes the Holy Spirit confirms this truth, convicts us of this truth about Jesus. So when I reject him, I therefore have rejected Jesus. That is why blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is unforgivable. There are huge examples of people blaspheming and being away from God for eternity. Well, the greatest one I think would be the angel Lucifer who was cast down. Lucifer's crime, you've been told, is pride. Saints, pride is not as serious as blasphemy because Jesus said all manner of sin will be forgiven, but the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven in this life nor the next. Lucifer was in eternity or the next. He blasphemed, he was cast down. Now I'm not saying angels can be forgiven even for what you think is pride. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying Lucifer and those rebel angels with him were in God's presence. They saw the glory of God. They rejected, they blasphemed. Ab and Eve were in God's presence. God spoke the truth to Adam. Adam passed that on. And they called good evil and evil good by eating of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because like Lucifer, they wanted to be like God. They called good evil, eating the fruit, 
They called good evil and evil good. They were cast out of God's presence. The people, obviously, in the time of Noah, the judgment happened. There were people that in, in our time, the people that are going to reject Christ and die. The spirit having convicted them that this is truth and they reject it and say, no, there's another way. I'm not going for that. They die because they blaspheme. They call good evil, Jesus, and the way to God, good evil and evil good. The end after the millennial kingdom, Satan's going to be let. And when Jesus comes back, Satan's going to be let loose for a little season. People are going to actually walk away from Jesus having seen him. They blaspheme, call it good evil and evil good. They walked out of God's presence just like Lucifer did in heaven. That is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And I bring that forward because so many of you, first I'm going to deal with the saints of God. I'm going to stick with this because this is more important than any of this other stuff today. Even a life application, this, what I'm telling you is more important than anything else, anything else in this book today. This becomes important because you God's sheep. Many of you have blasphemed. Someone's preached the word to you. Convicted you, you got crazy. They talking about me, man. They made me sick. I some of y'all done blasphemed and walked out of the church. You did that without full spiritual knowledge. I urge you to get on your knees. Or just not even that. Just call out to God for wherever you are. Now that you understand what blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is. I know you haven't been told before. How many of y'all have heard that before? That definition. Yeah, that's what I thought. Now that you know that, go to the Lord God and tell him you did not know. Because the Bible says if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yes, you did not have full spiritual knowledge. So that's going to be between you and God, how that goes. Church leaders who did not know that. And yes, y'all would be surprised to understand how many of them that will be watching this. Subscribe to this channel did not know what blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is. You did it without full spiritual knowledge. Now, most of you who did that, did that because God didn't call you and send you anyway. There's a, y'all heard my eight and 10, eight, 10 sent the eight and 10 church leaders sent they self. God sent the two and 10. How you think you got four, four churches within two blocks of each other? <laughs> I'll divide against itself shall not stand. I mean, that, come on, man. <laughs> That's absurd. The eight and 10 called themselves two and 10 God called. So the eight and 10, most of you, you had no idea because God never equipped you to do the work anyway. I would urge you as well. You eight and 10 that did not know that definition because you were never called by God. I urge you to call out to him and repent. If I were you, I would step down and repent for lying on God and lying to people about what God told you, which is probably another form of blasphemy itself. I'd step down before it's everlasting too late for you cannot. No lies of the truth. What fellowship has light with darkness. You love the power. You love the prestige. You love the clown show. You love... As Jesus said, people love to be called a marketplace. Hey, Rabbi, they love the highest seats in the synagogue, according to Jesus. You love that. And you've blasphemed. I, if I were you, I would step down. But I, you need to repent of the blasphemy, which means, in effect, you probably going to have to step down if you're serious. Is your eternal soul worth misrepresenting and lying about what the Holy Spirit told you? I understand the seriousness of this. And that's why I'm here telling you. Now, for you two and ten, you did it and you did it intentionally. You blasphemed the Holy Spirit. And I know that that happens because it happens here. It happened here in our community. Uh, over the last several years, that mission has been over for five or six months now. The Lord sent me in 2014, being in pastor in 2016. The Lord allowed me to be exalted here. For one of the reasons he allowed me to be exalted in that pulpit to the office of a pastor here is because without a pulpit, if you were a preacher, street preacher, prophet, whatever, without a pulpit and congregation, preachers don't, you have no validity. You don't matter. And I know because they told me that. One said to me, and this was like one of the real ones. He said, now that you're a pastor, the moderator is going to respect you. I was like, oh, is that how it works? There's this other overarching principle that I understand as well. I worked with in a Christian organization for seven years. And you know, when I left, you know, I was thrown out, obviously for speaking truth to Christians. Christians, right? You know, I worked with 165 people. You know how many of them, when I was thrown out, you know how many of them came and even called to see how I was doing? No, no. One eventually came by, but he was just being nosy some weeks or months later. So I'm saying that because you only matter when you matter. That's, I want you to think about that. You only matter when you matter. Because if I'm not doing this anymore, nobody's going to call and see about me. Nobody's going to come. And, I, and that's okay. I'm okay with that. So for those of you who God did call, you were confronted with truth as has happened here locally. And you said things like this. Oh, we got to pray for Dale, Doc. When I called you to repentance or you, wherever you are in the world, some God's loved you enough to send a prophet or a bold pastor, which are few and far between, to come to you and tell you you were wrong, you repent. Ha ha ha, you need to pray for them. Or they called me, oh, he, you know, he crazy. He offers medicine and all these other things. You two and 10 that are blasphemed the full spiritual knowledge. Unfortunately, 
There's no coming back for you because you did what you did. Unlike the other groups that I've addressed, the other previous two groups, God's sheep and then the eight and 10 who are lying about being sent anyway, blaspheming in a way. You did it with full spiritual knowledge. Jesus said, there's no forgiveness for you in this life or the next, but you made a choice. And I know because Brian Karn blasphemed the Holy Spirit, the worldwide prophet, B-R-I-A-N-C-A-R-N, blasphemed the Holy Spirit when I stepped up to him in Denver, Colorado, 12, 13 years ago, and called him back to Jesus. He's done. He's like, he's basically doing psychic readings now. But I can tell you this, you made your mistake knowingly. And finally, you've got to better educate yourself in God's word. I'm saying this because the Bible tells us that we're all given these various gifts. Some are given a gift of knowledge, some of wisdom, some of healing, some of tongues, miracles, etc. I haven't necessarily been given the gift of the wisdom of God's word. The two in ten pastors that I'm like the real ones, they have this deep wisdom. I was just I was just speaking to a dear brother of mine, Pastor Charles Daniel. And Daniel has this deep abiding wisdom of the word. God gave him <laughs> <laughs> and he has intellect. <laughs> so he's, he's, he's dangerous. <laughs> he's dangerous to Satan <laughs> with that word. But he gives those deep, he gives the pastors this deep abiding wisdom of the word. He didn't give me that. I'm a pastor, but I'm in the office of a pastor, but I'm something different. I'll leave it there. But he gave me the knowledge of his word. I'm asking you, as much as is in you, to seek the knowledge of God's word because it is the knowledge that will buttress you against false wisdom being pervaded from the word of God. Saints, you've got to go to God for yourself. The Bible says, seeking you shall find, asking for you, if you give a knock on the door, shall be open. He will open his word if you just ask, but avoid blasphemy, so be it.